instance, for this controller, I needed a 12 volt power lead, and on the other one, I could just use pack voltage. I'd, I needed to add a 12 volt source to a switch, and since I didn't have any other good circuits to go on, I added in a secondary circuit board, uh, just like this one, and that is inside that white box, which uh, I just need to uh, mount up securely still. Uh, but I have the power from the battery, positive and negative, go to that sub-circuit breaker, and then power goes out to the red switch, which you'll see in a moment, and then uh, to the controller. Now the controller is mounted in the same position as the old one, right down here. As you can see, it's just got a plain uh, uh, aluminum sheet metal cover on it. Uh, it's a little bit bulkier than the old controller. That's what the old controller looks like. And there's the new one right down there. Same position, so I didn't have to change the length of the cables or anything like that. Um, pretty basic. Just put it in. Uh, added the nuts and bolts to the cables, zip tied it in place. Okay, here's the switch for the controller. It's one of those light-up switches. It's in the on position right now, so you can see it lit up. And I use the solderless connectors on the back that uh, insulate, which is nice when you un plug and unplug those things. You don't accidentally rub them against each other and conduct. And this is probably just going to go right down on the side on the carpet for right now. And uh, eventually it's probably going to get mounted uh, right up near the steering column probably right about there when I'm all done.